Good afternoon and welcome to your weekly current affairs program, 60 Minutes Nigeria, where we dissect national issues as it happens. So we discuss. My name is Yagos Agmulao. On this week's edition, we're looking at insecurity and, of course, the economy. It is believed that there's a telling effect of insecurity on the economy. If insecurity is tamed, is curbed, it is also likely that the economy of that country will experience a boost. So, on the program today, are very two distinguished personalities with me today. I have Evangelist Uzi. Nice to have you today, Fred Uzi. Thank you nice for to have you today. Thank you for having me. I also have with us um, a man that represents the youths, a man that is uh, uh, always clamoring for the development of the youth and, of course, the farming sector. Uh, he prefers to be called a farmer, a fossa at Toy. Nice to have you. <laughs> He's actually the chairman of the Palm Produce Association of Edo State and uh, part of uh, what is that other organization? Afan. Afan. Okay. So nice to have you on the program. Uh, 60 Minutes Nigeria is always a delight to know you're spending your 60 minutes with us on the program. Um, only on Wednesday. This week, there was a massive protest of farmers, indigenous, of so many communities in Ovia Northeast. These indigenous converged on Oluku in Ovia Northeast local government. And it was, it was a massive protest. They protested against insecurity in their communities, Agate Manor, Okoho, so many communities. But the new Commissioner of Police at those states, CP Abutu Yaro, was able to pacify them by sending his representatives. But on our program, he also made his comments about the insecurity and modalities in place to ensure that insecurity is called. Before my guests will make their comments, let's quickly listen to the new CP of Edo State, Abu Tuyaro. I don't arrange for police tactical team to be based in Ovia. The tactical team, that is the police team, where they fight uh, bandits and bad people for push. In the next few days, people of Ovia and Edo State they will see the difference where police don't make to make sure these bad people, where they disturb our native people and travelers, their own time could not end. Okay, uh, nice to have you back. Uh, you just listened to the voice of the new commissioner of police at those state. Uh, it's actually Kami Fred Names, and he has assured. Uh, residents of Edo State, residents of Benin City, that uh, there's no need to be afraid, that they can sleep with their two eyes closed. But let's get the thoughts of my, uh, my guests. We we'll start with Evangelist Fred Uzi, uh, who is a clergyman and uh, he presides over a congregation. And I know that uh, he has a stake on this issue. This issue of insecurity, uh, what's your take on it? Uh, well, uh, uh, the issue of insecurity. Let's look at uh, let's look at it from this angle. Okay. We are talking about uh, insecurity and economy. Yeah. Okay. Let's first define the two words. Okay. Insecurity and economy. Yeah. Economy is the effective management of the resources of a community yeah. or a society. Okay. And also insecurity or security. Let's just say security. The insecurity is. The lack of security. Yes. A state where people are subject to danger, hmm. uncertainty, hmm. vulnerability. Hmm. Now, let me let me put it like this: security yes. and the economy goes together, like, like husband and wife. Yes. You know, they go together. The husband cannot do without the wife. Okay. You know, that's the way it goes. Security is the 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 defensity of a society. When the defensity is broken, 
is going to, you are in danger, expose you to danger. You know, security is what makes the economy. It's like the head to the body. Mm. You know, when the head is not in the body, yes. there is no body. So take for instance, let me make reference to Genesis chapter 3. You know, the Bible says, Adam and Eve. It was when the head was absent from home hmm. that the serpent crept into the garden to wreak havoc. So, so what, what we are saying here is that, you know, the absence of security in the economy makes the economy not economy. Okay. There is no economy without security. So when you talk about insecurity, it, it, today is, is, is a disaster, it's a problem. Is a problem. So I believe there's something wrong. Yes. And the insecurity, if you remove security from the economy, you don't have economy. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem we are having today. Okay. So that's your opening remarks, mm -hmm. Evangelist mm -hmm. uh, uh, Fred Uzi has just given us his opening remarks on uh, insecurity and, of course, uh, the likely effect on the economy of any society. Well, we have a farmer. He knows uh, uh, where it hurts. He who wears the shoe knows where it hurts. Um, the protests yesterday, massive protests against uh, alleged uh, atrocities of headsmen in uh, so many communities in Ovia Notis, uh, precisely, but we understand that there are also um, complaints from other parts of Edo State, and that necessitated the new CP to actually react and assure uh, those state residents of uh, intervention. And of course, that we'll begin to see what will happen from next week. But let's get the thoughts of a uh, toy. This insecurity um, is crippling the economy already. So, so what's your take on it? Yes, uh, the economy is going down because we've left uh, the security for the few security agencies like for the demonstration yes the question i want to ask nigerians as do do communities in Benin, all over when the community people are selling land there is no headsman but when there is an economic value farmers who want to plant who want to farm the headsman will come and chase them uh, we should not play politics with this. Uh, I'm not saying that the S-men are not there. How did the S-men get to the community? Where did they pass? Did they come from the sky? They passed through the road. And a time we should define who are these people. The people want to take over the land because they want to sell the land. And I will tell you, S men are not selling land. And if we should call a spade a spade, as a farmer, what we should be tackling is the people moving from the urban area to the rural area to, to transact business. When you see somebody inside the sea or the river, in the forest, you are not making farm, you are there. The audio way and uh, the community head should be edge responsible. They've compromised. They come there to tell them, we want to use your land for what? This is the areas we should check. When the farmers, like my major crop is oil palm, most of my members are complaining how community boys will carry bulldozers for their pumps, cash crops, you will not see s -men. When they come to put beacons and survey land, you will not see s -men. But when the petty farmers are going there to plant their cassava and others, you will call them s -men. I'm begging the new commissioner of police, he should unveil the mask covering these particular criminals. They are indigenous. They are a dope people. They are not. Look, I, I'm just wondering. Somebody from the north will come and displace me in my house. We should bring out information. The media should come out. The village you are talking about now, if you ask me as a believer, 
for a baby boy to go there. Where will I pass? The people in that village, they've compromised. They've compromised. The lazy ones that don't want to farm. You go to a community, you see young people sitting down. All the big phones are doing nothing. At night, they said, they chase us. They should send security men. They should go there and investigate. First, the, the elders of the community should be held responsible. And without security, you cannot transact business. And farming now is a big issue because most people are now in the urban. The bush, the forest have been deserted. For who? If the government is playing its part, the traditional rulers should play their part, the Christian the body organization should play their part. These persons are not spirit. As the, the evangelist said just now, he said Adam and Eve, serpent. Look, this is not the time we should give all those stories. What we have here now in this state is food shortage. You will go and buy a tuba of yam today, tomorrow, the same tuba of yam, the difference is 100%. Salary has not been increased. There is no grant anywhere. And everybody is just calm. It has got to a point now that the government is playing its part, that we, the farmers, should organize ourselves, and that is what we are doing. The government is playing their part, but we, the farmers, are we playing our part? Yes. But no, because if the government has opened everywhere, you want to farm, come, we'll open the land, we'll give you things to plant. After doing it, somebody will call and say, this land belongs to my ancestral father. Somebody will come and say, no, that is not the land. Government has no right to give you land to farm, to food, for food. Now, the question is this. The new security is not about policy. It's about our character. Because whoever goes into the bush and comes out, he comes with Ghana must go. After perpetrating this evil act, kidnapping, they will come with Ghana must go, they will come and give thanksgiving and testimony that the Lord has done it. Somebody who has no business is will be celebrated. We are begging the media. We are begging the media. We are begging the, the traditional rulers. This person should be identified. Why are you working? What are you doing? That is the bottom. It's not about the economy because we are, we are getting to a point you have money, you will not see the food to buy. That is a state of anarchy. And if I am here to say this, the community who are protesting, they should call themselves together. They know themselves. And ask this question, who are these intruders? How come when the politicians are campaigning towards that direction, the herdsmen they are on holidays, but when the farmers are coming to do their, their civil rights, to do their business, they are being chased away. Then let us strike the balance. The, the, I just pray that the, the new commissioner of police, for my information, is a no-nonsense man. He has a record. He should display it in a day. Let these persons, yet there are no more than, there are very few, bringing their money, deceiving the young ones okay. to create this insecurity. So I just pray that the commissioner of police should hit the the, the, the ground running. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay, we'll come back to you, but you've made so many uh, allegations, and uh, well, it is the duty of the police to actually investigate and uh, unravel uh, if actually uh, there are some locals that are actually conniving with uh, outsiders to uh, engage in uh, criminal activities. I know the police will surely investigate and, uh, and get them arrested and prosecuted. But those who are protesting, they made allegations that there are some headsmen actually disturbing their communities, invading their communities. It is also the duty of the police, and the CPI has assured us that whoever 
he's found one thing. We surely face the law, and we must give him time, benefit of the doubt. We know that this CP will perform, so we are very optimistic that the CP will do well in Edo State. We listen to him. He sent representatives. That is good leadership to actually uh, pacify the protesters yesterday. So we say kudos, thumbs up to the new CP. But we want to see uh, action as he has promised. But let's get the thought of a clergyman. Uh, yes, there's, there's another aspect, like a first I just said. Um, some young men do, do not really have uh, means of livelihood. You can't really say, okay, this person is working this company, or this, and he's living large. What's the duty? And some people believe that this kind of lifestyle contributes to insecurity, contributes to crime. Uh, what do you think should be done about this? You know, let me go back to that uh, aspect of insecurity okay. and the economy. Yes. You know, um, like I said, there is no economy yes. where there is insecurity. And when you are really talking about this insecurity issue, yes. you see, there is no security anyway. The economy cannot be managed. Nothing is working, no progress. Mm. The issue of this farmer, stuff like that, nothing will be working yes. in a situation where you have insecurity. I agree with you. So, so the bottom line is there is no security anywhere. And if you look at it, let's look at it from this angle. Yes. The, the people, the reason why there are no insecurity is automatically the failure of governance. Yes. Because... Like our brother said just now, you know, looking at some of these young men who have who nothing doing, and before you know what is happening, they have Ghana must go here and there. Everything still boiled down to what? Failure of governance. Take for instance, if, if you don't know where you are going, you cannot take me to where I'm going. So that is why when you talk about this insecurity, everything boils down to insecurity. Because the people who are supposed to, you know, offer this security matter, they are not doing anything. He made, he made the point just now. Look at this, particularly this village now, where these things are happening. Some of the leaders of this community should be called to book. Because one of the reasons why there are no security in that place, they sponsor some of all these things. The truth of the matter is that if we look at, the, if we look at insecurity, how do we tackle that? If we are able to tackle the issue of insecurity, I think it will go a long way to solve the problem of criminality, to solve the problem of maybe some of the young men who have no job, you just sit there with big phones, with big cars, with big money and all that. So everything still boils down to, you see, where there is insecurity, there's no truth. Where there is insecurity, people compromise. Where there is insecurity, there are peop people's lives at stake. People are, are afraid to speak the truth in the presence of insecurity. So, until, thank God for what, you know, the, the, the new commission now will trust God, yeah. God is going to use him to do it. But the truth is that let us be real. Let us be real. If we are going to tackle insecurity, let the body that are in charge come out real. You know, uh, for example, uh, the person I'm expecting to protect me, his life is is threatened for trying to come out to me to prove a solution, the right thing to say on how to tackle insecurity, and people are threatening him. So don't expect him to come out. He will go into hiding because he's afraid. So how do we tackle this insecurity? If insecurity can be tackled, it will go a long way to solve the problem of these young men who we see around, suspect, suspecting them to be this or that in the society. So insecurity has to be tackled. And how do we tackle insecurity? Let's do the right thing. I'm going to come back to that, but you really need to talk about how to tackle. But yes. the aspect I told you now, um, what's the role of, as a man of God, I know you are not speaking on behalf of mm -hmm. any religious organization, but as a man of God, um, you, you, you get to see some young men you know, uh, driving in very exotic cars, uh, living uh, flamboyant lifestyles without means of income, trustable means of income. You can't really say, oh, this young man works in this company, or is a factory worker, or is it? But it's flamboyant. He's living, like they say, 
<laughs> it's living large. What is the spirit of the clergy to do about that? <clears throat> now, I want to say something. Maybe yeah. I won't have time to you know, emphasize on it today. Yeah. You see, the root of insecurity in this society or in this country. Yeah. I'm a pastor. Yeah. The politicians are not the problem of this country. Okay. Mm. The problem of this country is pastors. I'm a pastor. Yes. But there are pastors and there are pastors. How do you mean? Now, what I mean is this. You know, where we miss this whole thing is that we have left the bearing, which is God. And when you miss the bearing, which is God, you don't expect, like I said just now, the person who don't know the way, who don't know where he's going, to come and show you where you are going. It, it, it's wrong like you are asking the blind to lead the person that is seen. It's, it's a tragedy. So, you know, when, as a clergyman, we miss the track, when we lost the connection, the church is supposed to be the prime connector to attract God to the society. Then when we lose the connection, and we, we, we deviate from the actual message, like our brother said just now, yeah. most of these people, when they get this thing, some of them go to some churches to do thanksgiving, God is on my side. And you see the clergyman without questioning, without preaching the right word, begin to encourage them, God is blessing. But the truth of the matter is, this is where we miss it. We have lost emphasis on righteousness, on the altar. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any, anybody. Mm -hmm. So, because we have lost it, when these young men come to do thanksgiving, they are not probed. They are not, they are not, the fear of God is not preached from the altar that will check them. So, if righteousness is, is emphasized on our altar, I'm telling you, it will go a long way to check, make some of all these things. Before I let you go, mm -hmm. Uh, we understand even some churches now, they, they bring POS and allow some of these young men to be transferring money to, instead of physical uh, <laughs> cash now, you mm. know, you just use the POS and say, oh, I give this, I give I know we are not to question the mode of giving because there's yeah. technology now. Yes, yes. But like you said, um, you, I, do you think clergy should really probe this young man? Yes, yes. Okay. You, you, you can probe them. Okay. For instance, in your church, Somebody comes with uh, maybe a title of maybe 20 million. Okay. And uh, it's your responsibility to call the person. Some of them come to these men of God and say, pray for me. They just pray for them. without asking my son, uh, what, what do you really do for a living? You know, where do you work? You know, that is that what makes you a spiritual man. Yes. You should be able to discern who is this? Where is this money coming from? But one of the reasons why it is not done, because, you see, like I said, when there is failure on the top, it will affect every part of the body. Mm. So it's because most of our, our, our men of God, unfortunately, they are not talking. They are, they are, they are silent. And some of them silent on, what? silent on the issue of righteousness, speaking righteousness to the grassroots. And everything is still boiled down to what? Insecurity. Most of them, like I said, who ought to be speaking the truth, they are afraid. Because in a situation where I speak the truth, my life is threatened. So most of them just deserve to keep quiet. It's because of this insecurity. For example, when you see a pastor start living like a politician, you don't know the difference between a pastor and a politician anymore. Everything boils down to insecurity. So but the solution is, let's go back to the bearing. Let the spiritual man, let the clergyman start emphasizing righteousness from the pulpit. It will go a long way to help the society. Many people bring money to most clergymen. When election is coming, they say, take money, you know, and they uh, just go ahead. And these people, uh, some of the things you call gift. If you look at Exodus 20, 20, 23, verse 8, the Bible says, gift blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous man. Most of the time, these people bring money to these clergymen, and they don't problem. They call it a gift, and when money at times is a bribe. And at the end of the day, the person who's supposed to be speaking the truth is saying something else. And we have a situation whereby if you want to prove some of them, you start speaking against you know, some of these people, your life is, is sadly treating you. Okay. So the truth of the matter is, if we will not compromise, if we let's do this thing the real way, 
the right, the right path. Let's go back to our beauty. Let's begin to emphasize righteousness on the altar. As men of God, it will go a long way to curb some of these If this, if this men of God, before we allow Tori come in, I, I really want you to clear this area because mm. I, I tell mentioned it. Yes. Yeah. Now, if this man of God begin to preach to these young men and say, no, don't get involved in internet fraud. Don't, uh, do, don't do anything that is so, the so-called Yahoo. Don't get involved in Yahoo. Don't, um, you know, live above your means of income. Do you think this man of God, don't you think some of them are scared that they will not have members? Yes. That's, uh, it doesn't, you see, membership does not define your calling. A lot of people today, unfortunately, are crazy for membership. Membership does not define who a real man of God is. A real man of God is known by your emphasis on the truth. The truth. It is the truth that makes you a genuine man of God. So, if man, the Bible says it's not he that is a, uh, he that commended himself, he's approved, but he that God commanded. So, we are, we, as a genuine man of God, what we, we preach not to please men. So, if you are really a man of God, if you are after the, the true destiny of any soul, you should preach the truth. The Bible says, the truth shall make you free. Thank you very much, Evangelist Fred Uzi. We'll take a brief break now on the program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. And when we come back, uh, my guest will actually dissect the topic and prefer and offer suggestions that can help the authorities in tackling security as a way of improving the economy. Nice to have you back on the program. Like I said, we are so happy that you are there spending your 60 minutes with us on the program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. We're actually looking at the topic insecurity and the economy. It is believed that no economy can thrive. No economy can um, get a boost when there's insecurity. Because investors will not even invest in any country, in any state where there's insecurity. You look at the um, index. You know, a country where the security index is favorable, you see that uh, even foreign investors will move in there. But there is a localized uh, insecurity that we are facing now, and that is what prompted the protests of Wednesday, where um, indigenous of over 14 communities in the Via Northeast protested against the alleged atrocities of headsmen. But my guest, Afosa Ato, who is a farmer, I've been able to bring a twist to the discussion, and we have left that for the security agencies to actually investigate and uh, find out if there are locals, local residents actually conniving, or if the community leaders are compromised. It is for the security agencies to do that. But the first time I come back to you. Now, these young men, because you are a youth, and you've always spoken for the youth. These young men, it is believed that because of the level of unemployment, most of these young men are take to crime. Do you think that's true? Uh, that is not true. It is because there is the, 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 the country we have now, the state, uh, the word deterrent has been buried. Good works are not being compensated. Transparency is forgotten. And the, the, the youth now that we call the Indomie generation, they've seen achievement in the other way around. That nobody will ask you how you get there. Everybody will celebrate you when you are there. And this thing has grown, it's now in our DNA, that wherever you go, nobody will come out and do what is right. I'm happy an evangelist has spoken quietly that even in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the daughters of Lot were still virgins. 
that will tell you in this country, in this state where we are, there are true men. Who I will call the men of God. Because all men are made by God. But our character, our choices, because the evangelist we don't know as a, as a farmer, I'm a Levite. And he quoted Leviticus. I'm going to quote Deuteronomy. This is not a religious. No, which he says. No, this is a religious. Yes. Yes. Why why allow, no, no, no. Why allow that aspect mm. to be clear? Yes. It's yes. because it is believed that the clergy do not chastise yes. these young men going to crime and bring money to the church. There are some young men who do legitimate business. There are some, there are some youths yeah. who are doing legitimate business and they are doing well. We commend them. They are not the ones we are talking about here. So those youths who are really doing legitimate business and they are not into crime, thumbs up for you. Mm -hmm. Keep the good job. Yeah, yeah, okay, you just it yeah. Let me tell you. I'm trying to say this before you said there are good youth. Those in the in, in the tech, in ITC, they are doing well. Yeah. And even the state government now has gone beyond paper, whatever. Okay. I'm not speaking for the government. Some of us that have eyes, we are saying. And we are not in the same political party. Yeah. But because what he's doing is reflecting. I said I want to quote the channel, you said no. We are not in this. <laughs> but let me tell you this. Yeah. It's because the choice is in our hands. Okay. Choose good and be good. Choose bad and remain there. But let me tell you. Whatever we sow today is what we are reaping. The insecurity we are talking about today did not start yesterday. It started in our homes. In the education sector, it started as my parties. In the religious sector, it started by my God is not is a God of prosperity. When it comes to the politics, it started with stomach infrastructure. Then this thing started growing. Give them what they want and get what you want. Today, they give it to her. We did the election in this state, in this country years ago. People that was not recruited were putting on police uniform. Nobody was arrested, nobody was persecuted. That's an allegation we can also say. Yes, because yes, I was in the field. We, we saw we saw we saw it. Yes. It was the same, it was this in this country. Arms were being imported and given to youth. It's an allegation we cannot suspect. But after election, we see them going after us. Today, they are saying they should mop 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 the arms. If you're not way out, if everybody is being trained to protect himself. Insecurity will be reduced, one. Secondly, let the CP with the state government check the criteria of an individual or a citizen to apply for security protection. These are one of the things, because you see these people who sponsor this bandit, they have security siren going before them and after them. They, they were never commissioners. They have not served this country. You will just see them. Who are you? Some of them were retired adults. Some of them were this uh, so-called, the Lord called me. When a pastor now uses about six or seven mobile men, then you will ask, your question, what is happening? But these things is not fashionable. Crusade, the people, the police are uniform in a crusade will be as more than the people who are seated in the in the in the high tables. Then you will now ask, this cage man is coming, coming six, the other one come five, and they are being celebrated. We are talking about security. What is the ratio of the Nigerian police force and the citizen? Let us look at these things. And secondly, we should identify our neighbors. Our neighbor is one of the things we should check. Who is your neighbor? 
What is in this state that we cannot know the next person? The local government, yes. The government should make. When we are growing up, there are some areas you cannot raise your fence, not as a certain level. But today, some fences in our neighborhood is higher than the Nigerian prisons. <laughs> People are not asking, what is this person doing? And we are crying every day. Look, the security agencies, they cannot, even in America, but the Americans are surviving because information is going out. Go to the, go to the police station. When, when, when criminals are being apprehended, their parents come out. My child has not done this before. You will see the parents testify, even when they are being caught at the, the heart. I will say, I will, my, 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 my advice to Nigerians, to uh, Dolight, is this. Our parents should not leave in security for the security agencies. They should not leave security for the pastors because they are not experts. They should take up, you should know your son. You should know your daughter. You should know who is your housemate, if there is any. Your neighbor is very important. Everybody comes out. The youth are not fools. I have some youth around me. They will tell you, brother, all these things you are saying is not Yahoo boys. So. By the way, how did the name come Yahoo? It's an internet fraud. You will call somebody now with dread and everything. Give him computer to operate. He cannot operate it. Yet he tells you it's a fraudster. How? I am not defending that part, but I am saying whatever reason we are facing today it started from the smallest unit in the society which is the home our parents should be able to be they should go back to uh, marriage counseling because children are gift from god and it's a social responsibility that parents should train their children because that is the society and that is the life so when we are talking about to provide solution on the economy the, the youth of nowadays, it's just like you go to where they repair phones. You don't see old people there. You see young people trying to amend your, your spread phone. Who taught them? Most of them, they are doing it out of passion. Try to remove it, try to make this. Now there's a school, there's a technology. It's not for the old ones. It's for this generation. And everything we are doing now is being captured. What is the value that we are adding to it? I will say this, I will say this very clearly. Farming has gone into technology and you don't need to be in a farm and look like one of the old multiple in the street. You go to the farm, there are people who will bring money to invest, to, to come and say they will uptake. We have retired professors, people are leaving the classroom to come to the farm because for we to survive the economy now is for we to tell ourselves the truth and go back to till the soil. And those state is so peaceful, the kilometer from here to the north is far. Even if they are coming with troops in Ukraine, when Russia was invading, we saw them when they were coming in with their tanks. This community they are demonstrating now, how do they reach there? That is what the new CP and those advising Mr. Governor should go. And I will say this, if they can frustrate Mr. President, we are crying here, we don't have a train rail. Kaduna that have train to Abuja, some element destroyed it and they said they are fighting for what people are quiet but the truth is this we are begging that our parents because the best person a murderer an assassin has a father he has a mother he has relations as i hear in us today nobody is willing to reach out to anybody but whoever that sees blessing from illegal means. Once the blessing comes, you hold it. 
If the punishment comes, don't cry out. You also hold it, grip it. Because what we believe and what we know is this, that anybody that sowed a good seed will reap that seed. And if you decide to do extraordinary, so be it. But let us remove the blame from the government. Let us come individually because the government is, does not have BVN. We that have BVN mount the government. The government does not have NIN. We have NIN. So the problem we have is particularly about we and us and not the government. So the government is doing its part. We should do our whole part by trying to evaluate and get what we need to do to tell the next generation. Because our fear is this. Some of us are here talking now because we've decided to take the path of transparency. When those who have taken the dark path now have children, which they have now, and they are growing, when those children, who we advise who? <laughs> that is a problem. That is a million dollar question. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, uh, that was very elaborate, uh, uh, I, I know you tried to um, make a lot of um, points. Um, well, I hope my viewer understands. Um, I think one good aspect that I really uh, seem to appreciate is the fact that people are returning to farming. Uh, the economy of Nigeria, there's inflationary period. And uh, if we have goods and services, we have farm produce in the market, and uh, it's just simple demand and supply. If uh, supply exceeds demand, then it means prices will fall. But if demand exceeds supply, it means prices will rise. Simple economics. But we really must appreciate the fact that as a farmer has told us that even some professors, even some lecturers are returning to the farm. It's a good one. It's a good one because that is just the way out. But um, evangelist um, Frey, if you are to advise governments, if you are to advise security agencies on tackling insecurity, what would be your advice? All right. Let me start like this. Yes. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When the fear of God is absent, people behave anyhow. The absence of the fear of God is the reason for insecurity. Okay. Now, there are people who have the responsibility to attract God into a society, mm. to emphasize and to project the fear of God into the hearts of men. When these people are not together, when their attentions are not brought together, when there is a division in that body, that society will suffer. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is this. In this state, I've been here. I have never seen any day, or I've never had it any year, I stand to be corrected, yeah. where the government of the day will call all the churches together, irrespective of, of your denomination. Mm. Call all the churches, let's have prayer for the state. If that has never been done. But the, the, the prayer we are having is denominational prayers. Okay. Most of the time, most of the people... Do you think that's, that's why we're having security? Yes, I'm coming here. Yes, I'm yeah. You are yeah. praying for the state. Yes. Yeah. That, you know, when we are praying individually, when we are praying denominationally, yeah. it, it goes nowhere. Because the hearts of the people are divided. The heart, the heart of the prime connectors to God is not one. So, I want to, I will recommend that okay. the government should take that step. Let them bring the churches together to do a combined state prayer for the state. Against insecurity. Against insecurity. Then secondly, let this, I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to celebrate, I want to, with all due respect, I want to thank God for our, our fathers of, of faith. 
they are doing their best. But I think there should be a forum once in a while. The government should be having meetings with some of all these our leaders of churches to, to talk to them, to emphasize on the truth on their altar. Because where truth, where truth is missing, it leads to insecurity. When a, a spiritual father who claims to know God cannot check his congregation, cannot guide his congregation according to the law of the truth, then what are you expecting? So that has never happened. Even in this country, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, look, I've been in Nigeria for some time, but I've never seen churches have been praying. We've never had combined prayers. Sometimes the whole Thanksgiving service is the whole... Uh, this, is, this is what we have. Arrow and the prayer. No, know, the it's, it's, it's all, no, no, no. no sir, yeah. I, I, it, yeah. You know, something of that nature has not happened. We have never had where this denomination comes, all the denomination comes together. Maybe let's go to this stadium. The government is organizing that. Bring all the churches together. Let's come and pray for the state. It goes a long way. Okay, I'm talking about what uh, some events in Abuja, uh, you know, federal government, you know, attracting uh, uh, or organizing, uh, uh, how will I put it now? It may not just be prayer. Prayers like that, but they will say, you know, so so service where different denominations come together. Sometimes they will do meetings where uh, other religious organizations will join the Christian organizations and they all pray, you know. But at the federal level, now I've seen that. But you are making a point still. Yes, I'm, 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 okay, I think that the authorities will. But now let's leave because it is believed that in Nigeria we keep talking about God, God, God is good, but. The only thing that there are certain things that citizens ought to do for themselves, that we shouldn't be thinking that God will have to do it for us. God will never, you know, encourage people to steal public funds. Mm. God will never, if money meant for uh, provision of electricity is stolen, and you want God to give you electricity, it doesn't work. So what advice are you giving now to the authorities? on how to really tackle insecurity. You've talked about prayers. What are the areas? Uh, like, actually, not everything God will do for you. Yeah. Uh, God only guides you. He gives you direction. Yeah. Um, everything still boils down to the fear of God. Mm. I think we, we missed it. We have left the bearing. Yeah, you said that. Mm. We have left the bearing. So I think... Uh, 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 God said if we can return back to better, where we lost him, where we miss him. Let's return back to that. For every society to, to do well, take for example, look at Israel today. For every society to do well, it is God, we must acknowledge God. Yes. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yes. If we acknowledge God in the society and the men of God in that society emphasize the truth, it goes a long way to aid that man in the society. That man was given privilege to lead, to you know, and manage this, manage that. That fear of God is there. Okay. You can't oppress people. Okay. And so, you, you, number one, once the fear of God is there, you value men. Hmm. You value men. Value human life. You value human life. The fear of God makes you to value people. When you value people, you don't think of oppression. Hmm. When you value life, you won't think of destroying your fellow neighbor. You won't think of oppressing any, anybody to crime. You won't think of stealing. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I think you've made your point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at first, I told you, now you have the floor, the closing remarks now. You have about five minutes for that. Uh, my closing remark is very clear. Today, I'm happy that the media will support a good works. Uh, this, this is an election year, and uh, things like this we are expecting. But with God intervening, as our evangelists will say, there are so many works for God to do. This one of insecurity. If prayer will change it, the prayers of our, our fathers would have changed it. These people don't even listen to prayers. And God himself, if he should send his angel to Nigeria 
I'm telling you, they will corrupt the angel. And, <laughs> and, yeah, as bad as that. Yes, and, and uh, the, <laughs> the, the evangelists yeah. should know yeah. that uh, when, the sons, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men dead, the Bible recorded it, they did not go back. The kind of life we are living now is something everybody wants to live. Go to the parties, you will see a tenant. Uh, people will rent uh, a, 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 an event center. They will go and borrow money to tell the neighbor that we've arrived. By spring, by spring, and you see they live lavish, they will lavish money. We will have a class, the rich, those in the middle class, and the poor. The poor are not just rich, they call them the poor because they manage what they have. Maybe they don't have big accounts, but they were called the poor. Now, the statistics are short. If you are not rich, there is no poor, you are rich. <laughs> there is no middle class, yeah. there is no poor. Even in, in the house of God, where the bridge, I told somebody, I said, can we try to take out okay, yes. house of God? Okay, house of okay, God. okay, okay. Yeah. Do, you, do, you know why, do you know why we are calling house of God, house of God? Yes. Please. We have three major industry in Edo State. The church, the beer parlor. Do you know the last one? No. Huh? No. You don't know? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> The, 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 our viewers will tell you the last one. That is the business we have here. There is no other business. Church is not a business. It's no, a, no, no. It's a religious organization. No, no, no. That is, like, like evangelists. No, no. Evangelists have just proved. Evangelists yeah. have just proved to me that the Bible is truly. It's not the word of God. It contains the word of God because we are the word of God. That is how I say it. And he has just shown to me that if we should handle insecurity and development, please, we should stop paying more emphasis. As, as Evangelist said, that uh, the government should organize prayer. There is one woman that used to pray in Ringo that they will lie down. And God, I know God hears that prayer. One thing I will tell you, what kind of prayer that will be like the one they did for Easter, the Passover, where in our Holy Week, when Jesus brought the bread, break, the same bread he gave Peter, he gave others, he gave Judas, and prayed. And Judas went to betray. So if you see prayers without work, the prayer will not manifest. Thank you. So, so what I will say yes. in this is, is a clear thing. Yes. Let us go back to our home where we do the first prayer of the day, the division, mommy devotion, where we we'll tell our children, be a good citizen. Thank you. Well, Evangelist Fred Z, thank you very much for your comments. We really appreciate all that you've done here today. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Uh, my viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the program. Uh, my guests seem to have emphasized the aspect of the clergy, the role of the clergy in the society. And I think it's understood that if the clergy, if they preach the truth and ensure that the youths fear God and abstain from crime, we'll have a better society. That's the summation of part of what they've said today. Do have a wonderful weekend ahead. Bye-bye.